Hi, this is Danielle Garcia from Intuitive Angels. Thanks for joining me today. As I work through a topic that is sometimes uncomfortable, that subject is death. Many people ask me, what is it like when a soul crosses over to the other side? How do they leave their body? What is it that you see? Well, I can tell you in my experience, helping souls cross over, whether they be stuck or whether they be in the physical form, each time a guide has appeared, a loved one has appeared to help that soul cross over. It is not like a scary horror movie or being buried alive um, underneath the ground. In actuality, it is quite joyful. It is loving. It is happy. The person is free from a body. And if they so choose, they can return to the physical realm in a spiritual form to make contact with those they have loved that have been left behind. It is up to those loved ones, those friends, whether or not they are open to receive such messages. Many things happen in our relationships, both with friends, lovers, and family. So much of that tension and forgiveness and healing can happen once a soul crosses over. It's a beautiful experience and one that I would like to share with you with this next video clip coming up about a daughter who connects with a mother and a past that is beginning to be healed. It is with gratitude and much light that I share this with you. Thank you so much for listening in. Stephanie, has your mother passed? Okay. Because um, the motherly energy is coming forward and she's making the, the, the connection. <coughs> um, she's saying so much she wishes that she could take the hurt away. Um, it was painful for her to watch you go through what you went through some of the things that you continue to go through because she feels that a lot of, she was the cause of a lot of it. Um, she's saying that she loved you enough to play that role where it wasn't comfortable for her, but it was necessary. You are not to blame for anything. You are still that beautiful light that all children are. You are still come from a place of purity. You still come from a place of your heart. And that's what she admires most of all. She says you are stronger than you will ever know. And that you are doing the steps now to, um, to heal the wounded heart. And as you do this, you're helping those around you. And you're helping so many more who will come into your life. Um, she says she comes around you at night and um, she whispers things in your ear. She says she tries not to come around where you'll really know that she's there there um, because she feels like she, uh, she may not be welcome. Um, but she comes and like she's showing you like laying on your pillow at night and she whispers things in your ear. It's like some song that she used to sing to you when you were a baby that you don't even remember. And she like uh, puts her fingers through your hair. Because she wants you to know that even through all of the past, there's still this deep heart connection that she has for you. She loves you very deeply, even though you may not have felt that, you may not have realized it, or your, your thoughts and ideals and perspective on that love have changed. And you're at a place of where you need to be with it right now, and that's fine. That's why she doesn't want to push you too um, hard 
or come through to where you can sense her completely because then that would knock you off of your own personal um, journey and your, only, your own personal um, self-protection and everything else that you've lined up for yourself that you're going through. But she does want you to know that she loves you very much. Um, she's saying that there's a part of her that feels um, just so responsible for everything. And she wants to say that she's sorry, even though that, that doesn't make up for anything. But she truly does have that remorse. And she wishes that she didn't have to play that role in your life that she played. And she's saying, please, just be gentle with yourself. You're so gentle with everyone else. Be gentle with yourself. It's, it's, that, it's that nurturing. It's that compassion. Think of yourself as a little baby. Think of yourself as a little toddler, a little child. You wouldn't expect or put any kind of, um, of measurement or expectations on a little child. You just wouldn't. So why do you try to put that kind of expectation on that time frame in your life? She's not giving me particulars because the particulars and the details are private and that's not necessary. But it's really, it's being able to get in touch with that part of you because you've, you've pushed it aside and you've had to. You know, that's how we adjust, that's how we move on, and that's how we continue to make it through life. Some things we have to close down on. But in closing down on that part, you've also closed down on that nurturing. You've closed down on that compassion. You've closed down on that wonderful feeling of being a child. When the child is in their lifetime and in that moment, that's all they're worried about is the moment. They're not worried about the past or the, or the present. It's the moment. It's, okay, what, what else can I do? What else is going to bring me joy? What else is going to bring me love? Because the universe provides. When I cry, somebody's there and they're going to take care of it. So really, again, she's just saying, be gentle with yourself. She wishes that you could be gentle with yourself in the way that she was never able to convey that gentleness to you. And I really think the reason why I was drawn to do this was to bring that through for you, Stephanie. And if we could all right now just send love to Stephanie just take a deep breath, and just from your heart to her heart, send all that child, inner child joy and love and nurturing.